uh, this post of a science writer or science writer as a profession has started only recently so we need the society needs many many people who can talk about science write about science or create content i realized that more than doing my experiments i was enjoying reading about popular science uh, you need not publish everything that you write so if i am writing something i make it a routine to write something every day i am not going to publish all that right so i don't have to worry how it reads or i just write something just for the fun for my my own purpose of learning how to write Welcome to Career Conversations. In this series, we interview professionals and educators to introduce students to various career paths. And today, we are going to discuss scientific writing as a career path with Dr. Rohini Karandikar. So, uh, hi, Rohini. Welcome to Career Hello. Conversations. Hello. Thank you. Okay. So, let me introduce Rohini. So, Rohini is a science science writer at Joves. Uh, which is a world leading uh, organization which provides scientific videos which creates uh, these videos and rohini has around 5 years of experience after her phd in this field and in jobs she has been there for last one and half years so she has also volunteered as a fact checker for uh, during the pandemic with indian scientists response to covid 19 and for health analytics asia's project okay so today we will uh, we'll come to know what uh, what is scientific writing and all with uh, from rohini so let's start then rohini yeah sure. so uh, first so content writing i know that we also have one episode around content writing right where we are talking about the content which is been consumed by the uh, users around social media or these things but what is scientific writing that we would like to know Uh, so scientific writing or science writing is uh, communicating science in a simple and interesting way uh, to okay. anyone who is curious to know about science okay uh, and i'm saying communicating science because science writing is not just limited to writing uh, uh-huh. these days people uh, don't just want to read they also want to uh, look at they also want to uh, see videos they want to hear podcasts they want to see infographics because there's so much of information around us that we don't re- don't really have the time to read each and everything so okay. if you see a 2 minute video then that gives you more i mean much more appealing information or that gives you something very clear compared to reading about the same topic uh, in a say 200 uh, in a 200 word article uh, also looking at an infographic so in a on a one a4 page Uh, you get all the information that you want to know about a certain topic right, so, right. Uh, things have become so fast that even science uh, communication or science writing has evolved into different forms that's great i mean in this fast flowing uh, world we have to have this short videos which can give us more information that's great so what does a scientific uh, science writer do exactly how how does uh, it yeah uh, so it depends on who you are creating the content for okay so it could be uh, you're writing or you're cre- creating content for school students or for mm-hmm. college students or okay. for the general public who is just interested to know about science or for scientists or for policy makers okay. so uh, depending on who you are writing it for your uh, tasks will change your challenges will be different Right. and then you have to keep your reader or your listener or your viewer in mind and right. then create content uh, around a topic so just that i was thinking so how is it different than writing a textbook which are the science textbook and how is it different is it the same will you call it same or are they both different uh, so science writing as in the content that comes under science writing is very different for different people again okay. like i said it depends on who you are writing it for who is your audience uh, okay. so you could be writing a small 250 word article you could be writing an explainer to say why something is correct or why some practice is not okay. good uh, for example you could be writing to say that too much of uh, uh, you know cleaning too much is not good why is it not good in a very short you would write it as a small explainer you could be writing a press release uh, a 
about a certain discovery that has happened in the lab and you want to write it for the science journalists who will be writing a story on it for the type of uh, yes it depends on that yeah if depends. you're writing uh, for school students if you're writing a textbook then again uh, how well is it mapped to their curriculum what are the what is the content uh, you know what are the examples in your content how right. are you bringing them uh, close to their experience uh-huh. so it it depends on that if you're oh. writing for the general public how are you starting your article are you is your article relevant um it it depends again on that you know how uh, are you so starting with some so that they could, uh, the audience should understand in an easy yes. way what's happening it and was not just understand i would say right. uh, not just understand i would say they should also be able to relate to it correct for example right now there is because of the climate change we have these heat waves and forest fires so correct. that is something very burning right now i mean uh, there are so many people writing about it why is that happening so right now if i write about some covid vaccine it may not be so relevant right. so relevance is the key when you are creating content you are creating content correct correct nice nicely explained romini so then uh, can you uh, walk us through your journey how you have been in this field how it started so it started when i was doing my phd with uh, in the department of biosciences and uh, and bioengineering in iit bombay and okay. i was in the fourth or fifth year of my phd mm-hmm. and i realized uh, like i won't hesitate to say this but i realized that more than doing my experiments i was enjoying reading about popular science oh i loved reading popular science i like to talk about it and also to write about it Okay. so i stumbled across a course called writing in the sciences and i just uh, registered for that it, it was a free course offered by stanford university and i started doing the assignments on that course i started sending my assignments for peer review i also reviewed other people's uh, stories and articles uh uh-huh. okay. that was fun i really enjoyed doing that and okay. after that uh, course i started writing my own blog so wow. uh, i started writing about whatever i felt I, i didn't think about whether it is science it is not science it is a personal feeling or so i just wrote something on my blog uh around the same time people uh, like my friends and relatives they would ask me about my phd topic right so when i said that i am working on a bacterium that uh, is capable of degrading uh, parental compounds of plasticizers Uh, then that was something interesting and yeah, obviously people would ask okay so uh, so is your bacterium capable of eating away all the plastic yeah, right. <laughs> so in a similar vein uh, my husband who was doing a his phd in cancer research many uh-huh. people would ask him uh, ask him about the cure for cancer or the cause of cancer so have you found out the cure for cancer finally when are we going to get uh, you know a final a permanent cure for cancer now okay. these are very interesting questions right. you know when is plastic going to just uh, uh, get degraded all over the planet all can over. can bacteria do that or what do we have, have we found a magic pill for cancer but these are also very difficult questions right. to answer they are not very easy they don't have a yes no kind of an answer but that somewhere uh, uh, told me or that somewhere um, it struck to me that many people need to be talking about science mm-hmm. to the public to students writer as a profession didn't exist until recently correct so if, even in those days even now many scientists are they still continue to doing science continue to do science communication but right. the uh, this post of a science writer or science writer as a profession has started only recently so oh, we yeah. need the society needs many many people who can talk about science write about science or create content uh, which people can easily uh, follow yes yes um, uh, this again i would like to say during covid the role of science communicators was like people started um, uh, you know um, giving importance to this role of yeah. science communicators because there was so much about covid that was not known even to scientists or to doctors true, true. and people wanted answers some questions were so really difficult it was out there but nobody right. could understand it until unless somebody sits and tells you explains you that what does it mean how where are, where is it going when are we getting the vaccine so these questions were really need to be answered and i think you have specifically volunteered for that thing yeah right? correct okay 
so uh, uh, so rohini can you describe what day to day how does it look like for you as a science creator or the science writer how is it, how does it look like for you right uh, so i start my day with planning for the for, for my project uh, mm -hmm. at jo uh, what so mainly as a science writer or any science writer in our team uh, we write scripts on okay. a certain topic and uh -huh. uh, we also create storyboards based on that script okay. and then we also write a, at a company page text so okay. um, the content that we are creating in our team is currently aimed uh, at students who have just completed their 12th standard mm -hmm. okay. so many universities all over the world they have subscribed to our content and uh, they use it they use the videos as a part of their teaching teaching those topics for example cell biology uh which we are currently we, uh, we are soon going to release in the uh, end of august and we also will to soon start another topic after that yeah. so uh, i start planning around about i start planning about how like how to write the script what all should i cover in that script how the video should look like and mm -hmm. how to again uh, create that storyboard based yeah. on so uh, so just a curiosity ki how much time it takes from writing a script to getting the video release any estimate on that that you have it depends on the complexity of the topic okay some to topics are very simple but let me tell you this that the topics that appear to be simple those uh -huh. are the most difficult to write correct because you can, can give not... us one example on like how you started suppose the cell structure how the what minute things you have to be aware about while writing the content can you just give us some comments on that okay so uh, when you are writing anything not just a script even if you are writing an article uh, for it could be for a teacher a teacher of a students uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, you cannot assume that the reader or the viewer knows already what you are going to talk about correct so you have to um, start introducing new so if you have introduced a new term say you you start talking about phagocytosis you have to say what phagocytosis is correct and then you have to move forward now okay. if you are writing something in a very short you know 200 words then you are really bound for word word count you know you have to in a nutshell you have to tell what exactly is happening in a particular concept for okay. example if i am talking about how the muscle contracts right okay so i can't start talking about um, muscle hair contains proteins called actin myosin no 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 i have to tell you know why how does the muscle contract what, what is a muscle cell the muscle cell is something that enables the muscle to contract and relax and then there is there are some proteins which again play a role there and this action of these proteins is quite concerted you know it's a coordinated action so Correct. i have to very slowly go into the core of the topic Right. start with an introduction to start with something the student will understand very easily and then go slowly to the core right. i also have to uh, be careful to use a lot to not use a lot of jargon okay. because that is something which puts anybody off even even the most well read person can be put off by too much jargon so yeah. uh, we have to be careful about that again uh, okay. uh, at times it is also helpful to talk about analogies about relevant examples to uh, make sure we we connect our content to what the reader or the viewer already knows right 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 okay so got it i mean it's a lengthy process in short and it takes time for any concept to just make it simplify and put it out there for the right. entire world okay so rohini what type of opportunities are there in this field what type of roles and levels are there in science writing uh again it depends on uh, many things here it depends on who like uh, uh, like i said in the beginning beginning the audience and also what is the product that you are creating if you are writing for uh, many things here it depends on who like uh, uh, like i said in the beginning beginning the audience and also what is the product that you are creating if you are writing for um, students then you could be writing uh, textbooks you could be um, uh, writing co curricular material uh or you could be creating infographics or videos uh -huh. if you're writing something for the teachers you will have to do a bit more research as to you know where exactly does the teacher need help or how is your content going to help the teacher 
and how is it different than what he or she is already doing in the class right okay if you're writing for policy makers then again there is you have to think about how it is good for the overall development of someone you know overall uh, how is it for the benefit of the society many or for context, the benefit of society? many context context are, dependent uh, while writing you have to think yes. about so different companies offer different roles like you hmm. could be working as a science writer mostly people begin as a science writer then you uh, of course there are again people who are not just writing people are also illustrating so right. there is also illustration so people communicate science through illustrations people right. create science to communicate science through videos so you need animators uh, right. who breathe life into these uh, illustrations into these storyboards and create beautiful videos right. um now uh, nowadays people have also started uh, writing poetry to oh. communicate science so wow. sci art or poetry or songs or even theater like people create people you know they write short scripts for um, skits or for some street plays to yeah. communicate science so right. it's an ever evolving field wow. so writers and editors are there but we are going to have so many more people yeah. in the future so difficult to say uh, what exactly like a person can okay so uh rohini what type of advice uh, would you give to the juniors who want to start their career in this in this career path uh to the very young students who are still in school i will just say enjoy your school life okay. because there is uh, there are so many fields that uh, you know evolve uh, uh -huh. new fields for example science writing we didn't know about science writing when we were in school I had never thought I would be really? become a science writer. Yeah, really uh, recent. Even... Nobody uh, uh, is uh, uh, still now. Nobody, uh, not many people are aware about this field. I guess right. Like even data scientists, like we didn't know about data science. Uh, data scientists as a profession, but today it exists. Correct. So um, I will suggest just keep your eyes and ears open. Follow your passion. Of course, if you are interested in reading about popular science, please read. That's something very nice. But yeah. don't narrow. Don't say that I want to become this only. I would right. suggest just keep all options open because you never know what will come to you as a as an opportunity. Correct. Correct. I agree. Uh, for the elder students like who are in college now and who are seriously thinking of taking up science uh, writing or science illustration or whatever form i will say um, you like the way i started was i i used to read and still read a lot of popular science articles and popular science books so okay. when i um, at times what i do is i when i read or i come across a very interesting paragraph or an interesting page i pause for a moment and i uh, start asking why did i like this paragraph so much or why did i like these lines so much right. how, uh, how has the author structured this uh, for making it very gripping mm -hmm. uh, why does, does this example stand out you know why is this what is so special about this style right. and then i i really look at structure very carefully of course it is very difficult to imitate someone's style eventually all writers develop their own style but this is something i enjoy doing alongside reading oh, wow Correct. so when you write a blog you actually you should give it to people give it to your friends it and knows. this is also something that i learned uh, during a workshop for women in science uh, journalism okay that i had attended around 5 years back in bangalore um, and it was a very interesting workshop very insightful we got to know a lot of things about science writing so uh, we were told that when you write the first draft you uh, or when you write something you you think it's it, it looks decent enough give it to people take feedback because unless you take feedback you will not know how it appears to people okay. how how readers feel about it okay. so that's one thing i learned and what i also did was i would uh, revisit my blog after some months you know when you look at your own writing after two days also you can make out the difference you can think okay maybe i could do something different to me make it more better yes yes so drafting is something very important here people say oh you've written such a nice draft so that's not my first version okay when anybody writes a, a very nice thing that's not that may not necessarily not be their first version yeah so in the first draft people just put their ideas on the screen or on the paper and then you edit it and you look at your own writing very critically 
correct and then you uh, after you know you after three your own hours, critic right, right. right of course there'll be reviewers there'll be your friends there'll be people to help you but uh, your own writing will become better with your own uh, with with practice correct uh, like many science writers say that science uh, most science writers say that science writing is a craft you know you have you develop it with time correct that's the key agree okay so uh, basically if you want to communicate science this is the best way uh, to be as a science writer and it's not necessarily be a end goal of your career but it can be also done while doing other like research work or whatever work right. you uh, have been already yes. so that is one thing i we understood from your uh, uh, so we are almost towards the last question and we would like to know before uh, we uh, end this conversation ki what type of resources would you like to recommend to the beginners that they can start with i would suggest uh, reading a lot of popular science articles or books uh there could be books or there could be also be the um, articles that are published in newspapers in the science column or there are popular science magazines like nagio or um, the scientist scientific american any any magazine that you can read read okay. and uh, you can also it is also um, um, recommended that you read if you if you know another any other language other than english uh, because we need science communicators in different uh, vernacular languages right so that is also a need of the r so if you know any other local language like hindi marathi or your own uh, mother tongue you can look up uh, resources in that language as well that language It'll be of a great help if you can write in your own uh, native language or vernacular language so right. i can also tell you that i had done some science writing in marathi and okay. during uh, my work with isrc indian scientists response to covid we were also doing science communication in marathi and hindi so wow. that is also very challenging but it's also absolutely needed at the moment yes yes uh, so okay. reading popular science articles is one write about science you know if you uh, if there is some strange insect in your backyard what did it look like did you do a google search and find out what it was uh, Uh, is it you? You know, is it usually found in your uh, look at area, or you just found it? You don't know. Uh, yes. So write about something. Keep writing. That exactly. is one thing. And you, asking questions to yourself. Yes, yes. yes. So And this, one one more thing we had learned in the workshop was when you write, uh, you need not publish everything that you write. So if I am writing something, I make it a routine to write something every day. I am not going to publish all that, right? so i don't have to worry how it reads or i just write something just for the fun for my my own purpose of learning how to write that's it wow great wonderful uh, one more thing i can uh, yeah. suggest uh, yeah. if you are really thinking of taking science writing as a career option uh, these days there are many many courses on writing science and yeah. uh, people uh, like again as science communication is evolving people are also pitching their courses or people have designed their courses for different forms of science communication mm -hmm. like there are courses on storyboarding there are courses on um, how to create an infographic so uh, even now you know i i take some of these courses i register for some of these courses and there is something new to learn every time i do a new course so uh, with time you will be like you will be able to keep yourself abreast with what is the latest form of communication rohini uh, would you like to recommend any uh, platform where people can go write blindly and they can also get few comments or there are many uh, readers over there that any platform or any website that you have on your in your mind that students can go and write i would say the sky is the limit there is so much you know you can visit uh, popular science writers blogs Uh, mm -hmm. you can read again like i said columns that come in newspapers mm -hmm. they could be in any language again uh, okay. you can read uh, you can read popular science magazines you can subscribe uh, okay. so not all magazines nagio one you mentioned yeah and uh, uh, you can also read um, the, the scientific american is another one yes then uh, in india also again vigyan prasar have their own resources of on on science it's also most of them are also available online again india bioscience uh, they also invite articles on science okay. so if you think uh, and they also have many many resources you know they can connect you with people 
so there are these many networking platforms that are available today yeah. and of course starting your own blog on say wordpress is is free you can just start you know start putting content over there you can start sharing it on social media uh, writing a post on social media itself yeah. can be a starting okay. point yeah so many many options many things that you can do right now correct okay rohini so that was great uh, conversation and we got to know many insights about the science, science writing and i'm i'm sure uh, viewers will uh, watch this episode and understand what is the importance of having science writers uh, in the society so thank you for uh, joining us today thank you so much bhagyashri thank you so much bhagyashri Hope you find this interview uh, interesting to understand scientific writing as a career path. And if you want to watch more uh, exciting career path conversations in the future, please subscribe to our channel mysphere.net on YouTube. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. Thank you so much.